we would embrace and say, I love you in the Lord. And then we have a short prayer together. And then when all the men had finished, we would stand in a circle and hold hands and have a group prayer, group blessing. And that was part of our foot washing ceremony. Because as Jesus commanded us who follow Christianity, it's for humility and it's for strengthening the brotherhood and the sisterhood. <clears throat> How would you apply that to real life? Hmm. I've been thinking about that very recently, as I mentioned. And step one is to acknowledge the need. Acknowledge the need of foot washing. Now, in our case, religious faith, the minister, the preacher, the pastor says, now is the time for foot washing. So the need is sort of established for you. And then you think about that. You do the internal working. What do I have to work on this time? Is there a certain person whose feet I should choose to wash this time? Maybe someone who angered me, or someone who ticked me off, or someone I need to get to know a little bit better. So you start by acknowledging the need. The second step, and you don't always follow these steps in the order of mentioning them, but the second step usually is to initiate. To initiate the foot washing action. Last week, I had the most amazing initiation of what could be a symbolic foot washing. Last Saturday, I went to Iowa to see the wedding of my good friend Tom Willison's youngest daughter. Some of you know Tom Willison, who's a charter member of Saturday Morning Live, now living in Freeport, Illinois. So I was going out to see the wedding, see my little sister Christina get married. The previous two weeks to that, my on again, off again girlfriend, who we'll just call A today. A was upset with me. A was very upset with me about something. A called me quite regularly during a week and a half to express her anger and to tell me how many other people she expressed her anger to. And being the mature adults we are, we had our conversation by voicemail. <laughs> leave a voicemail, I leave our voicemail back. Along well, the way, I decided, you know, I'm a Toastmaster, I'm a little mature here, why don't we actually talk voice to voice? So I called her on day seven of this barrage, and we talked, and it quickly degenerated into negative conversation. Okay, that didn't work. Anyway, this continued until the Thursday before the wedding, so last Thursday. I got a voice back. Right. I want to move forward. I have some clarity with the message I had. A couple hours later, I had another voice mail. Are you still going to that wedding? I would go with you if you asked me nicely. <laughs> I know the exact words she left because I had to listen to that message ten times. What? What? What did she say? The incredibly kept building. But it was true. I called her and we talked, and she said, I think it'd be helpful for us to have that trip together. And I didn't tell you where the wedding was. I said Iowa. I said Dubuque, Iowa. Dubuque is a five hour drive from where I live in St. Paul. Five hours there, five hours back. Ten hours in the car of this person who has spent ten days full of vitriol in our conversation. And I was thinking about Caroline's speech. Bicycle built for two. Caroline <laughs> and I have had conversations about this relationship. I was thinking, wouldn't Caroline get a kick out of the fact we're taking a car trip for two, <laughs> ten hours? But you know, it worked out to the positive. Because step three, after you initiate, is of course to get supplies. Get the bowl of water and the towel. And to get ready for the foot washing. And that's the next step in the healing process if you're going to have forgiveness. Try to mend a broken relationship. One of those steps involves taking off your shoes and your stockings or socks. Uncovering yourself. Making yourself vulnerable. I have a, a recent opposite in Toastmasters. We've had some challenges in our communications. But this week we're in a Toastmasters meeting together. And we had table topics. 
this person was the leader of Table Topics, and gave me a question where I had a chance to describe Charlie Brown. So I gave my description of Charlie Brown and, and had fun with that. Ended up being selected the best Table Topic speaker. And I mention that because, number one, she, this person talked to me afterwards. <laughs> And just had a nice general conversation. Hey, how's it going? Wow. We haven't talked in quite a while. We've done a lot of e talking. But then the person sent me an email congratulating me for being selected best table topics and sent the whole peanuts comment to all the characters. Not knowing how much I love the peanuts. <laughs> I'm still mad at the Schultz family that Camp Snoopy is gone from all of America. <laughs> but it was a nice gesture. A little uncovering. And maybe we'll get to a place we can mend fences. So that step of taking off the shoe and sock, uncovering, making yourself vulnerable. After that, of course, comes checking out the water. Is it too hot? Is it too cold? You don't want to try to mend a relationship by coming in with a lot of vitriol anger. Because that's what probably got you in the place where you need them in a relationship. And you don't want to be too stoic. My problem in the past is I don't open up and share thoughts and share feelings to move forward that healing. Well, that step is important. It was interesting as A and I were coming back from the wedding, among other topics that we discussed, was a potential wedding of ours. I tell you, this was quite a trip. <laughs> I'm listening to her, and she's going, yeah, so we could get married, but I want to be married by a priest. You see, A grew up Catholic. My friends, Tom and Darren, and their families, are Catholics. Guess what conversation I found out she had with Tom? About the joy of being from a Catholic family and having a Catholic wedding. So she said to me as we were driving back, you would need to convert, because priests won't marry non-Catholics. Those of you are Catholics, you know that. That would be quite a change for me, because if you don't know the Christian continuum, Catholicism, Seventh-day Adventist, worlds apart. <laughs> <laughs> but she said something else, too. And that moves you to that other part of the foot washing, the embrace. Showing that the relationship is healing, moving forward. We are in the brotherhood, the sisterhood together. She said, Keith, I knew this was going to work out for us for this trip. When I put my hand over toward yours, I was driving, and you squeezed my hand. I knew something good here. Because it was a leap of faith, she told me, to go on this trip. I had my car ready to rent my own car and go back if it was necessary. <laughs> that was pretty powerful for me. In the final part of the foot washing ceremony, the serving, the prayer. Now, whether you're a person of faith or not, symbolically, that is, of course, the circle of life, humanity that we all share. Because the person who aggravates you the most whether it's your spouse, whether it's a family member, in-law, whether it's someone you work with, someone you worship with, someone you serve the community with, or even someone you're in Toastmasters together with. <coughs> we all part of that circle of life. And that was something that I was reminded of every time we had our circle at my church and had our prayer following the foot washing. No one's really an ogre, whether a Republican or Democrat, they're Christian or Hindu or Muslim or, or any other faith, whether they're atheists or non-believers, whether they're man or woman, whatever, no matter what their sexual orientation, we all are humans and part of the circle of life. As I returned A to her home, I was driving back to my house. Of course, there's a lot of heavy thinking about the weekend. It was a heavy weekend. We saw a wedding, we talked about a wedding. I some healing. But it struck me so powerfully. The power of that little ceremony. Quick walk. 15, 20 minutes. What that could mean in terms of potential lifetime of healing. 
So I invite each one of you here this morning to think about your opposites. Should we take a bully approach with them? Or we take our bowl of water and our towel and wash 